So um, I just finished reading Herod Histories by Herodotus. Um, this is a book that um, I've come across its mention many times whenever I'm reading um, history, especially history that um, that happened between or between maybe 500 BCE and coming this way maybe to um, to zero zero AD if there is zero zero AD but you get what I mean then this is a book that is often mentioned as a source um, uh, and more specifically when it's about the history of uh, the Greek city-states and also um, Persia uh, Syria Babylon um, yeah so this is a book that is uh, often cited as a source and I thought a source for ancient history that is and I thought maybe I need to read this book so I took some time it's taken me a while to, to finish the book um, it's a long book uh, it's a voluminous book uh, but it's a very interesting book and is it has it, it, it gives you uh, the bigger picture of what was happening in the entire world then um, according Herodotus for him, he thought he had more or less covered um, history and geography and so many other topics of the entire world according to what the people, the Greeks knew at that time, the entire world meant. So it's a very detailed book. Um, and I'm going to, to uh, record a few videos um, uh, giving some interesting tales. Um, that are in the book uh, but in this video I'm going to kind of do like a review of the entire book uh, to just let you know what it's about or what to expect if you intend to read it uh, yeah but later on I'll create a few videos going into specific interesting topics and tales in the book uh, so the book is primarily um, about the, the Greco-Persian war that's the war between the Greeks and the Macedonians. I think they are called that. The people from the Macedon, which is like some part of the Balkan area in Europe. Uh, and the Persia, which, which was a great empire whose headquarters was around the, where we know today is Iran. Um, and this war started a few years before Herodotus was born. Herodotus is born around 480 something BCE and the war started around 490 BCE so maybe like 15 to 20 years before he was born but this war went on even until after Herodotus was dead so in the book he covers the origin of this war and how it went on but he also goes back and looks at things that happened way before the war um, so I want you not to get the impression that the book is entirely about that war. Yeah, it covers the entire time or bigger chunk of the time when the war ha happened. But the Herodotus talks about other things like, uh, including other conflicts. Uh, there's a conflict between Persia and the Mede. In fact, he gives us the history of how the empire of Persia came to be the big empire. Before that, there was a smaller uh, empire called Persia and it had a neighbor called the Medes. The Medes were the lords of the Persians but at some point um, through the efforts of one Cyrus the Great the Persians kind of conquered the Medes and joined the two into one empire and then they went on fighting. They took Egypt, they took Babylon, Syria and so many other small uh, empires or kingdoms in that region in Asia that is their neighbors before they then now went into Asia Minor uh, where Turkey is today they conquered a kingdom there called Lydia then now from Lydia now they went now into the Greek city-states Sparta Athens and all those city-states and they these wars went on and, and in the book Herodotus gives us this, explains or illustrates how the, the Greek city-states um, 
had this challenge of uniting against the Persians. Um, some of the Greek city states will will go and join the Pers the Persian Empire and they fight on their side. Others will form a coalition and try to confront that force. So it's a really messy kind of conflict, and it goes into detail. Um, and I learned a few things, or the book explained a few things that maybe I knew but didn't know that I knew and didn't know some parts of it. For example, there is this movie I watched maybe 10 or 15 years ago, 300. Um, it turns out the movie is, is, is a story picked from, I think, the, the book, Herod, uh, Histories by Eroditas. There is um, an army of, I think, Spartans of 300 people who are going out and fighting the Persians. And yeah, so, so the book is about Persia, Greek city-states, and also Persia fighting Egypt, Babylon. Uh, and um, it, it, Herodotus seems to have taken it upon himself to understand the entire world and put it on record. And he traveled a lot. He went to Egypt. He went to travel around, the, of course, Greek city-states. He went even beyond the, the uh, Greek uh, city-states and, and he tried to understand the cultures, the tribes, uh, the races. And another thing you get from the book is um, race, the, the race relations, like the ancient people did not see race the way we see it today. Uh, I always assumed they were more racist in the past, or people were generally more racist in the past than we are today. But it looks to me, when you read through the book, like they did not see race as we see it. To them, it's like culture and tribe was more important than race. Um, and um, he, uh, Herodotus traveled all the way to India, according to his book, the way he explains it. He went to, he, he intermingled with uh, Arabs. He came to Africa, which then was called Libya, interestingly. Uh, he went to Ethiopia. Um, he, he also describes ancient Egyptians as black. Um, there has, has always been this conversation around whether the ancient Egyptians were white or black or of what race. Uh, he, he describes them as black and they shaved their, their heads, almost always had their heads shaved. Uh, he describes Ethiopians as black and he also calls them the most beautiful people he had seen uh, while traveling. And he also describes tribes, other tribes, in, to the south of Egypt and Ethiopia and to the west of Egypt. We know today that a region as Libya, Tunisia, Algeria. Um, he also gives us, tells us about Phoenician traders going to what we now to know today as West Africa. And they went there for gold and he gives this story of these traders going to the, uh, to the, with their ships and then they will alight and then they light a fire and then they'll go back to their ships and then they they will leave their goods there apparently they used not to have one-on-one -on -one communication with these communities they went to trade with for some reason and Herodotus even himself he says he doesn't understand why that was the case uh, so there are so many interesting stories to cut the story, the, the story short um, I also need to point out that he goes into detail to describe uh, cultures in very, uh, in a very detailed way, tribes, geography, animals, even plants. Uh, and he also, um, uh, okay, when you read the book, one thing I noticed, he is very careful with sources, even Later on, people have accused him of not being accurate, but me reading the book, I felt like, yeah, he might have made mistakes, but those were not, he, he, 
he did his best to avoid such mistakes, but they had to happen anyway. Uh, and where he was not so sure, especially where he had to rely on local people to tell him about the local history, sometimes he will leave. A, he will say that I was not so convinced about that, but that's the information I got from them. For example, he, he talks about traveling to the north of the region where the Greeks live today, maybe into the middle of Europe. And um, he was trying to find out the people who live in that region, and that region was so remote, and he went talking to tribes there. And he, at some point he asked them, who lives further north, maybe to the region that we know today, Scandinavia. I, I assume that to be the place. And the tribes told him, uh, the people who live up there are one-eyed tribes, people who have one eye and... Um, he said he took that, but he said he was not so convinced about it, but there was no any other way to prove whether that was true or not. So there are so many incidences where he does that. Yeah, so the book starts with the origin of the Persian War, and then it goes on to talk about Cyrus, uh, and after Cyrus dies, the king, the emperor of Persia, uh, there's this, his son takes over, um, Cambyses. Cambyses, the guy who now went to Egypt, conquered Egypt, and then he desecrated their um, temples. And, um, and he, he, the, the Egyptians believe they cast him because somehow he destroyed one of their gods. Uh, Cambyses became, uh, his leg became infected and he died before he went back to Persia. And after that, Cambyses had killed his own brother, but it was kind of a secret and some people knew about it. And somebody went back to Persia and proclaimed himself to be the brother of Cambyses, son of Cyrus the Great. And he became emperor for some time before he was discovered. And uh, there is this guy uh, called Darius, uh, who was a son of somebody like a governor of a state within the empire, who discovered it and he came and he formed a group with some friends and they went and they confronted this guy with his family and they killed them all. And then Darius tripped these other people he had organized to it. I'm going to create a video for that. It's a very interesting story. He conspired or he, he tricked them and he ended up becoming the king himself, King Darius. And uh, he ruled for almost 50 years, if I'm not wrong. And then he, he, when he died, his son, Saxis, took over. And Saxis was very ruthless. He's now the one who uh, put together a huge army and decided, I'm going to go to, um, to, to the Greeks and conquer all of them. And he went, and for some time, he seemed like he was being successful at, at that campaign, but somehow, the weather failed him, I think, and he could not conquer, and he had to run away back to Persia. And uh, it's a long story how he ran back to Persia, and, and, and the book ends with Saxis as still the emperor of Persia. Um, but there's a lot of histories, and I'm going to create video for specific tales and, and specific events, uh, as many as I can. Yeah, so that's that's what i have to say about it's an interesting book of course um and i need to point out that this is a book that is often described as the first known attempt to record history so it's a very important book in fact Herodotus is often called the father of history so if you are um, a fan of history it's a book you should read should find time to read uh, it's a very detailed book um there are, i wouldn't say it's while herodotus was so careful or he seemed to have been very careful you won't take it to be accurate because in some story in many of the stories he puts down he had to rely on other people to tell him and often he had to travel to tribes and ask them about oh this happened how did it happen and sometimes these people are giving stories uh, word of mouth they also had they they didn't see it happen so of course they start to consider so it's not like it's completely like perfect and 
or have a record of history, but is a very good um, uh, foundation. Uh, it can give you, a, for me, I, I liked it because it, it gave me a general understanding of the mindset of the time he lived, Herodotus, especially in Greek, and Egypt, and Persia, and Babylon, and the Phoenician cities along the, is it the Mediterranean? Um, yeah, so I'm going to do specific videos giving some interesting tales uh, that I collected from before I came across in the book.